What up, y'all? We're doing a book haul, baby. He got so excited to say that, and I forgot about it entirely. He's like, we get to say the thing. Uh, we haven't done it in a while. Um, you should have been here five seconds ago when he counted the number of books we had to haul, and he was like, oh, that's not yeah, bad. That's, not, that's, like, that's 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And we'll then be I was done. like, all of those. There's literally a bookshelf. Like a, like, a, like the book, the book. Uh, what, what is that called? Shelf? No, the whole thing, though. Oh, a case? No, the, what's book the, the book. Yeah, there's a bookcase, and one of the shelves has a, a whole stack of books in it. It's full. It's a full shelf uh, that we got we got a haul, as well as a, a stack about this high right here with about 20 books. So um, it's been a while. I would I, say we got at least like 30-something books today to haul. Oh, like probably around 40. I'm say, I said at least, okay? My thing is, okay, so I don't think I've filmed the book haul since before... COVID. COVID. Essentially, we were broke like half of the people in the world and weren't able to afford a lot of books, and I didn't get a lot of books. Then publishers weren't sending out books, so a lot of people weren't getting the free books that they get. Anyway, now we have books. We so have books now. we've been <laughs> acquiring them for a while, so we're, we're going to do it. It's going to be, go grab a snack, pause the video... Leave a comment, like it, and then go grab a snack. I got and then, a snack. And then come back and then leave another comment. I thought you were going to say leave another snack. First things Wh first. Where's your snack? My tea. That's not a snack, man. It's a snack. First things first. We got I these got... little baby things. So I get a lot of these. Can I, see um, it? Can I see it? I don't know what it is. These strange planet things sent to me. Oh, uh, look at that. Is it supposed to be like that? It's a, it's a postcard set, so you rip them out. Oh, shoot. That's pretty cool. So this one's a planner, and it's cute. Look at that. I must organize my existence. Tiny trash confetti. Get it? Oh. Uh, these are funny. I found this. It's vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cat, guys. Uh, remember when you thought your cat was broken? Yeah. When you, My mom thought that, that Oswin was sick. <laughs> She's like, she's, no, maybe it was my dad, but she was, Link, they, you mean? it was, it was one of them though. But like, they were like, they were like, I think your cat is sick. Cause it's like, <laughs> it's like making a noise. Like, a, like know. that's purring. My first cat I ever got when I was a kid, my, I thought we broke the cat cause it was purring. Anyway. So this one's a planner. It literally just has like each set of two pages is a week. You can just write stuff in it and it comes with some stickers. So that was cool of them. They, uh, Harper sends me a lot of Did we get, like, book two in the thing? Oh, shoot. I think that's downstairs. I think, it, yeah, it's off to the, the side, right? Dang it. I have to go get it. All right. Here, we'll do this. Okay. I almost forgot about this book. So, so is this, like, the second one? Yeah, it's, like, book two in, like, the bind-up. So they also sent me... What's a bind-up? A bind-up is, like... An amalgamation of all the things? Yeah, like m multiple ones. I don't know if I use that word correctly, but <laughs> we're going to just assume I didn't. So they're like a daily comic, weekly comic? It doesn't say that. It's just a bunch of them put together. They're cute. The beings are back oh. and they are encountering melodies, traditions, unpredictable behavior, fear, pain, and geography. They're cute. It's like aliens responding to a stranger stuff. Tr stranger planet. Yeah. They are cute. So, like I said, Harper's always super nice to me and sends me, like, all of these when they come out. Um, and I think these just came out the other day. The At least the postcard and the planner came out the other day. And uh, the book's been out for a little while now. What I don't like about this is that I, I wouldn't want, I don't want to tear them out. I was thinking of sending postcards to all my family randomly. Yeah, no, it would be funny, but it's like, I feel bad. Like, it's like, oh, I don't want to waste them. This They're... is our oldest liquid, not remotely fresh. Wine. Why? I need to send that to my parents. It's like, they're just like cute things. And it's like, I feel bad, like using them, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like whenever you buy like a sticker book, it's like, I don't want to use any of the stickers <laughs> in there because once I use them, they're gone forever. Yep. So Next. Then Avon Books sent me some sexy time reading that's look at that weird woman. and the guy he's like what <laughs> i will not be reading that Her night with the duke um i read one of these that they sent me and it was it was all right 
I, I have no idea if this one's going to be okay. I don't even know if it's the same author, to be honest. It's the co cloud. The cover looks the same. They all look... I mean, romance is romance. When I'm in the mood for... Rude? Yeah, it is a little rude. I agree. When I'm in the mood for romance, it's great to have one that I could just pick up and go. But you have to be into historical romance if you want to read this because it's obviously historical romance. Um, yeah. I couldn't do it. You don't like romance. You are a greater man than, than I. Then I'm excited. Um, this book just came out recently, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. It's like super shiny. Um, what does that say? Paolini. Is that the, the author? Yeah, so he's the guy that wrote Aragon. Oh, that guy. And this book is so gorgeous looking. I don't even know if you can see it because it's so shiny. Does but... that person not have a head? You know, they do. They're oh, just they're like just back. like this. Yeah, okay. Um, so this book is actually 800 and something pages. Does it not? Are you saying that because it doesn't look like 800 yeah. and something? Or because it does look like... It's almost 900. Does it look like it's more or less than the less. 800? Less. It's 878. So it has like those super thin pages. Like like they start doing with... um. Bibles? No, no. Yeah, well, they, I think they call them Bible <laughs> pages. But it's a... Uh, Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass. They eventually started go getting into like these types of pages because you can just. It can I see the naked? It doesn't look as intimidating, dude. This has like really Ooh, cool. I love when they have art on the like. What are the, What is this part of the book papers. called? End papers. End papers. It's actually like just a really cool book. Nice. I wonder what that logo means. All around. So that's the naked. Is there an image on the back page too? It's the same one. Ah. Uh. I think yeah. So yeah, it's a really cool book. This is going to be our November book club pick. Um, what? Have we talked about this? Yes, like five times. Have we? Yes, like five times. I feel like you're just, I wanted, you just decided for me. Time and out. Now, mm. I wanted to make it October's pick. You said no, we're reading Dune. So we're reading Dune. We gotta read Dune. We gotta give people two months to read Dune. It's a big, big boy book. No, we're giving them one month. Yeah, I know, but like you got it. The you movie, announced it ahead the movie, of time. yeah, but also the movie comes out in December. It says theaters, but I don't know about that. They're open. People told me. I, I don't know. Mm. So, this is November's book club pick. If you're interested in joining, and Dune is oh, our. What's it about? Wait, what's Dune? What month is it for? October. Dune is our October book. So if you guys want to join us for that, the end of October, we'll it will be done with it. Now she's awakened a nightmare. During a routine survey mission on an uncolonized planet, Kira finds an alien relic. At first she's delighted, but elation turns to terror when the ancient dust around her begins to move. As war erupts among the stars, Kira is launched into a galaxy-spanning odyssey of discovery and transformation. First contact isn't at all what she imagined, and events push her to the very limits of what it means to be a human. I don't want to read more. It's a sci-fi book. The Spice Melange. The what? It's from Dune. Oh. The Spice. The... Never mind. We'll, we'll find... We'll, ne on the next book haul, you'll know what The Spice is. I got this a while ago also, and I never sent it back, which I'm kind of regretting because it came damaged. But that is Vicious Spirits by Cat Cho. This is the sequel to Wicked Fox. Um, basically a Korean fantasy about like the nine-tailed fox and i really liked the first one a lot and i can't wait to continue i think this follows different characters though can't really tell you too much about it because it's a sequel yeah it is it is following different characters though which i like when Can authors, i judge the cover i like when authors do that um art art is nice let's see the actual naked i love the purple uh purple is nice it's just a simple you know, simple. Purple. Uh, I don't like how easily it slides, though. Yeah, well, I also got a damaged copy, and I should have sent it back, but I didn't. Yeah, it's not that bad, but you've gotten worse. I have. You've gotten some that are just, like, torn. Like, the hardcover itself is torn. Yeah. Which is crazy. Dude, are any of these books things... Oh, I know the, next, the, next, the third one. Oh, what? you're not even pulling them in order. You're not I even pulling them in order. Two to be together. What the hell, man? Then I was sent um, a princess for Christmas. It looks like a Barbie. 
She looks like yeah. a like a Barbie doll. By Jenny Holiday. What a perfect name for a Christmas novel. What is it called? Her name is Jenny Holiday, but it's a Christmas oh, book. Okay. So you well, you said what a perfect title for a for a I said what a perfect name for a Christmas t- oh, title. Oh, Christmas author? Whatever. A book. Whatever. Book author, a book author that writes a Christmas car- story? So this comes out in October. Um, they sent it to me early. It says, Leo Ritchie is already handling all he can between taking care of his little sister Gabby, driving a cab, and being the, the super of his apartment building in the Bronx. But when Gabby spots a princess in a gown outside the United Nations trying to hail a cab, she begs her brother to stop and help. Before he knows it, he's got a real-life damsel in distress in the backseat of his car. So, it's like, I'm guessing it's going to be a romance. I mean, yeah, it definitely let's is. Let's be real. 100%. That you already said what it was. I, I mean, know. The description, what you just wrote. Right. Read. I wrote. Maybe, I don't know. So, Are I have never, holiday? believe it or not, read a holiday Christmas no. Ca- ca- what about Christmas Carol? No. Have you ever read that? I've never read romance. a holiday romance, romance, which I know that's a thing that people love, and I don't know if because... Yeah, have you ever seen the theaters during Christmas? There's always like five Christmas... Romance. Romance. Movies. I don't know why I've never gotten into it, but maybe I'll try it this year and see if it's something that I enjoy. I think Christmas just makes people feel like warm and fuzzy, and like maybe romance makes people feel warm and fuzzy, so... We'll see. I won't read this. This. That is looks super cool. Book a bajillion and ten. He looks like a dark elf. In the Dritz series. This is Relentless by R.A. Salvatore. I am a huge R.A. Salvatore fan, in case you don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little jealous from it, all right? Let me put my seat up. I'm, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show you guys how upset I am about this. Why? I'm a, I'm a little jealous, jealous. Because I called Dritz to my book boyfriend because yeah. he is. That's not cool. That's not cool. And um, yeah, this is... Guinevar is my book boyfriend. So Guinevar's a girl. I don't care. I don't care. Still my boyfriend. So this is another trilogy in the Dritz series. This is the ending of a trilogy. So I can't tell you what it's about. But these are all the Dritz books. Wait, are they like next to each other? Or is it like that's one book and that's the same book? That's No, they're different. Oh my God. There's a lot. Are they of... all written by him? Yeah, he he made Drist. Yeah, I get it, he but maybe Drist. okay. But he's writing in the Forgotten Realms. He didn't create the Forgotten Realms. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like I thought maybe somebody else. Wait, are these more books? Yeah. No. But that's not Drist's book. But why there's are there other books? Why are there so many? He's written a lot. And wait, we... where where does this one fall? After here. Why isn't it there then? <laughs> Why don't they put the book there? There are. Let's count them. One, two, three. Just double it. Just double it and minus one. 36? Just double it and minus one. I don't one. know if that makes sense though. I don't know. It there doesn't are... make sense what you just counted because there should be an odd amount because there are, there's a row. You, you, you don't know how to count, Meek? Come on. 18. Yeah, so 35. I counted this book. Anyway, there are a ton of books with Dritz in it. I do know that some of the Dritz books or the books in the Dritz series don't actually have a lot of him in 36? it. 36? Like, I'm just... We just... That's how many books I read last year. Yeah. Like, all year long. Like... So we actually just started reading slash rereading um, the Dritz series, I just finished book two today, Exile, and I'm going to start Sojourn soon. Um, we have some people reading along with us. If Dritz books are something you like or something you're interested in, we're still early enough in the reading, read along reading that you can read with us. You can join, uh, the Patreon, Discord. uh, Discord, and that's where you guys do a lot of your book talk, book read along things and if i know someone's reading the same thing as me i'll create a separate channel where we can talk spoilers we together. have we have a patron that read the third book by accident <laughs> instead of the second book and uh, he was just like i'm missing so much like is this author just doing that confusing well he thing? messaged me he's like man i'm really liking the dritz stuff man it's really good and i'm like that's good it's, it's good right and he's like yeah it's really good and i'm like okay cool and then later you tell me he's like uh apparently <laughs> did you guys just find out yesterday about that when you guys no were talking? it was like the other day oh, okay yeah that's hilarious but anyway i can't tell you the synopsis of this but some of the dritz books aren't heavily 
they don't have a lot of drift stuff in them. Like some of them barely have them at all. He's just a really good writer of D and D type stuff. So if you like D and D, you'll probably like Ari Salvatore. And if you like D and D, you probably already read something by him. Probably. I mean, what about the naked? Did, yeah, did we so show I was it? Look, no. Nothing fancy. R A S. Then I picked up. I don't know why I have a bookmark in this because I haven't read it. Um, the Big Book of Modern Fantasy. This is a huge bind up of a bunch of modern day fantasy stories, like short stories. By what is a modern day fantasy? Like things not set in like medieval times and stuff. What is a mo Give me an example. You bought the book. You should know at least one modern day fantasy. I don't know what to say. Something like, to me, like the Shadow Hunters are like modern day fantasy. They're urban fantasy because they're in our wait time. Wait a second. Wait a second. So this is like new stories. Yes. So it's not like, okay. They're not a bunch it. of old stories. I thought you were talking about like myths and stuff, like Little Red Riding Hood. Oh no. You know what I, I mean? I don't think so. And I'm like, what? What kind of new fantasy is there besides? This says, step through a shimmering portal, a worn wardrobe door, a schism in the sky, into a bold new age of fantasy when worlds beyond worlds become a genre unto itself. From the fabulous 50s to the swinging 60s, the strange, strange 70s, to the over-the-top 80s, the gnarly 90s and beyond into the 21st centuries, century, uh, the Vandermeers, which are who put this book together, have found the stories and the writers from around the world who reinvented and revitalized the fantasy genre after World War II. So this collection is 22 different countries, represented by 22 different countries. Um, so there's 22 different stories? No. There's a lot. I forget. There's more than 22. Yeah. Oh, jeez. There's like... But they're all short stories, I guess? Yeah. So this is all of the stories. All right, cool. It's a lot, but I mean... It's so not for me. I like continuity between my stories. I don't like like just a mishmash. I know mishmash. George R.R. R. Martin wrote one. Stephen King. Uh, Haruki Murakami, which is like a famous Japanese uh, author. There's a bunch of like well-known authors in here that wrote stuff, so... I like stuff like this sometimes just to pick up and read like one shot short story. I don't know why it's printed like this though. Oh, it's like a textbook. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, it makes it feel like work, uh, right? <laughs> I don't even like looking at it. <laughs> then I randomly got sent this book um, in case you missed it by Lindsay Kelk. I have know nothing about this book except that it's probably a fantasy. I mean, a romance based on the It doesn't cover. sound like a fantasy at no. all. Uh, September. So it should be out now or soon. September 8th. A hilarious, relatable, and heartwarming new romantic comedy from the author of One in a Million. When Roz comes home to London after three years away, she's ready to pick up the life exactly where she left it. Up with life, not the life. But her friends have moved on, her parents have rekindled their romance, and her bedroom is now a garden shed. All of a sudden, she's swept up in nostalgia for the way things were. Then her phone begins to ping with messages from her old life, including one number she thought she'd erased for good, the man who broke her heart. Blah, Ugh. blah, blah. Ugh. I love romance sometimes. They're just cute and fluffy. I'll probably read that. Then is a book that I got on Book of the Month. I don't know how to say this. Piranesi? Piranesi? This book has a lot of hype right now and I pretty much got it because it sells for like $22 here and it's super short and it was 10 bucks at book of the month so I did it as a book add-on ah I like it I don't it's like, like mustard it. it's like Hufflepuff oh uh, what is the problem with that why I do you have a problem like with Hufflepuffs colors. huh Piranesi Piranesi's house is no ordinary building its rooms are infinite the corridors endless its walls are lined with thousands upon thousands of statues each one from uh different from all the others within the labyrinth of halls an ocean is imprisoned waves thunder up staircases rooms are flooded in an instant but Piranesi is not afraid he understands the tide as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth itself he lives to explore the house. There's one other person in the house, a man called The Other, who visits Piranesi twice a week and asks for help with research into a great and secret knowledge. 
but as Piranesi explores, evidence emerges of another person and a terrible truth begins to unravel. I don't really want to know much more. I hear really good things about this book so far. And then after I purchased it, they sent me the finished hardcover copy. And sometimes this happens. I mean, I'm, I'm really thankful and grateful that they send me things at all. Um, but I had no idea this was coming, so I already purchased the book. It's tiny. Ooh, this one's pretty, though. It's tiny. It is a small book. Oh, look at oh, this. Oh, it has a different thing. It doesn't have the mustard. Wait, was that the mustard one? No. Well, it's the book of the month copy is different. But it That's says cool. the name on it. That's cool. Open it up. Or you ruined the binding. No, I showed them this already. No, open up the cover to show the one Oh, image. I see. See? Okay. <sighs> that looks cool, dude. That's cool, dude. So it's really cool. I can't wait uh, to get into this. It's by the author that wrote Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which I have that book. I haven't read it yet because it's like a million pages long. So it's like the complete opposite of this. I got to get nine up here. Come on, nine. You're up there? Yeah. Come on, nine. All right. Well, let me make sure. Then from Book of the Month, I also put this book as an add-on, Recursion by Blake Crouch. This is another book. I believe it's also a standalone, the same guy that wrote Dark Matter. Um, I really, really liked Dark Matter a lot. I think It I, looks like the same type of cover. Yeah. I, gave, I was going to say that, <laughs> but I didn't want to sound stupid, but it looks like the same style of like, one, the name is similar. Um, so. I gave that one, I think, a 4.5 out of 5. I really want him to read it, but he hasn't read it yet. Time. I need, I need time. Um, so, yeah, I got this one also. It's the same colors, but backwards. Yeah, they do that a lot. They're, they're not very creative with their uh with This their one's covers. also older, though. It's June 2019. So this book's been out for a while. That wow. one just came out. Um, this one says, Memory makes reality. That's what New York City cop Barry Sutton is learning as he investigates the devastating phenomenon the media has dubbed false memory syndrome, a mysterious affliction that drives its victims mad with memories of a life they never had. That's what neuroscientist Helena Smith believes. It's why she dedicated her life to creating a technology that will let us preserve our most precious memories. If she succeeds, anyone will be able to re-experience a first kiss, the birth of a child, the final moment of a dying parent. As Barry searches for the truth, he comes face to face with an opponent more terrifying than any disease, a force that attacks not just our minds, but the very fabric of the past. And it, and as it, its effects begin to unmake the world as we know it, only he and Helena working together will stand a chance at defeating it. I don't know. I don't know if I'll like this. I also didn't think I would really like Dark Matter as much as I did. Um, That's why I made you read it. Some people like this book better. Some people like it just as much. I don't know many people that have said they like it less than Dark Matter. So I kind of have high hopes for it. You have a stinky doggy. Um, my official book of the month pick for September was The Last Story of Mina Lee. This is basically just... A straight up fiction novel from what I can tell. Ew, dog. I don't want your lickies. I really like this cover. You like the orange? Not so much, but I like the pinkish red color. Mm, with the gold. Uh, Margot Lee's mother, Mina, isn't returning her calls. It's a mystery to 26-year-old Margot until she visits her childhood apartment in Koreatown, LA and finds that her mother has suspiciously died. The discovery ends Margot... Digging through the past, unraveling the tenuous, invisible strings that held together her single mother's life as a Korean war orphan and an undocumented immigrant, only to realize how little she truly knew about her mother. So it sounded cool to me, like, kind of trying to unravel a mystery mixed with, like, finding out her mother's past after she died. Um, honestly... I didn't really overly love any of the book of the month picks for September, but this was the one that sounded the best to me out of all of them, which is why I chose it. Stop. I look weird. <laughs> What's up with my, like, cheeks? You have, like, look fancy at, cheekbones. Look at this little thing right here. I'm like, <laughs> we got sent these awesome masks along with this book, even if we break. Man, um, you want to wear one, too? 
There you go. You can't see her. What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong? So this book um, sounded pretty cool to me. It comes out in September at some point, so it may be out already. Um, I don't really know much about this book. It says, the thing that scares me the most isn't that I might break us further apart. It's that I want to. Set over the course of one deadly weekend and told from five pulse-pounding perspectives. It's a shocking thriller about a group of friends tied together by a game and the relationships that define them. So Yours fits too well on your face. I don't like it. It's very, like, cat eye. Mine is cat eyes. <laughs> Yours looks I'm so literally a cat. Funny. <laughs> this is how I look. <laughs> yeah. So. It almost looks like I have, like, little butt teeth. Like. I think the thing that made me really um, want to read this book the most is, like, someone has already read it and said it wasn't their cup of tea because it was too, like, dungeon Dungeons and Dragons-esque. Which, what? that's, like, right down our alley. You can't see my eyebrows right now, but they're very <laughs> angry. Um, so, yeah, we love D&D. &D. We play D&D &D weekly. And if that's the kind of game they're playing, I'm all in. Hmm. Yes. This says, five friends go to a cabin. Four of them are hiding secrets. Three years of history bind them. Two are doomed from the start. And one person wants to end this. No one is safe. Are you ready to play? I'm going to try on the other mask. Oh, it also came with some cool coins. Hold on. <laughs> I love how your glasses fit over these. This one doesn't fit very well. I like mine. I can't even see my eyes. There we go. Wait, my chin, my chin's too big. Uh, <laughs> it has to stick out the bottom. So it came with a D10. Can you give me a kiss? No. You want to kiss me? No. Kiss me, woman. Um, which, if you're a D and D fan, you know it's a ten sided. Oh, there die. are my eyes. Can you see my eyes? I got an eight. And then it came with these awesome coins. Yeah, I, I have a spot right here. I think it's a pimple. No, it's dirt. I got a dirty spot on my forehead. Oh my god, you're not Put convinced. it in the middle. It's pretty cool that it came with coins. What is she licking? I can't see. I my my, my perif is, is... My perifs are gone. I legit have to look through this like this. Because if I look straight forward, I have no eyes. Anyway, I think this book sounds cool just because we're D&D &D fans. And I hope it's kind of game-esque like that. Because, yeah. There's a le there was legit like poop on Dirt. my forehead, dude. That cover, what is that? So don't what make is, fun of this. What book. is that next one? Don't you dare. Why? What is it? Oh my god, my hair. I know, make it already looked bad before, but now it's it's disgusting. I give up. I'm gonna look like crap the rest of this video. It's all right. Nobody cares. I'm super excited to read this book. What is it, Meek? Kingdom of the Wicked. I don't even see the name of it, but it's by Carrie Maniscalco. This comes out the end of October. Oh, Carrie Maniscalco. The lady that wrote the yeah, um, Stalking the Jack the Ripper Stalking series. Stalking Jack the Ripper. They sent me this. I just like cool it's cool. PR it's stuff. cool. I like that better than the the half pages that they do. Or the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the cutoff pages. That's nice. And I think this is super super neat that they came with like numbered Whoa, signatures. Look at that. So this is twenty four out of a hundred pretty cool dude mine came a little wonky but it's cool it's pretty cool dude i actually just started reading this last night um, and i don't know enough yet okay <laughs> but i really love her writing based on the stalking jack the ripper series i gave that series like a four out of five like as a whole um it's just it was a lot of fun this is also kind of a murder mystery type story i think but it has witches in it oh. um I'm just, I'm not. Comes so, out in October. It does. I don't really love the cover. I'm not going to lie, but. Let me see. Let me be the judge. What don't you love about it? I the don't snakes, know. the snake's teeth don't make sense. They're, they're like coming out of the, the middle of their. They're, I, so I pre-ordered the Barnes and Noble edition of this book, which has a purple cover, which I'm really excited about. And it also has like annotated chapters by the author. What does that mean? It's so like she wrote 
on the chapters and like, and, like the bar- margin yeah, type thing. Yeah, so you can read them. Usually nice. that's what it means. So I'm excited to get that version of the book. If it was just the Barnes and Noble, I mean, if it was just a regular version, I don't think I would have pre-ordered it on top of owning it. Mm. Unless I really hate this book, I'm going to keep that book pre-ordered. Yeah. Um, This one came a little damaged. But yeah, this says, Amelia and her twin sister, Victoria, are something witches. I can't read that word. Who live secretly among humans, avoiding notice and persecution. One night, Victoria misses dinner service at the family's renowned Sicilian restaurant. Amelia soon finds the body of her beloved twin, de- desecrated beyond belief. Devastated, Amelia sets out to find her sister's killer and seek vengeance at any cost, even if it means using dark magic that's been long forbidden. When Amelia meets Wrath, one of the wicked, who are princes of hell, she's been warned against... No, Princess of Hell, she's been warned against in tales since she was a child. Wrath claims to be on Amelia's side, tasked by his master with solving a series of women's murders on the island. I I don't know. The Stalking Jack the Ripper books, like, the synopses didn't really jump out and make me want to read them. Um, and I know I like her writing, so I have high hopes for this book. Uh, witching, witchy type stuff isn't normally my go-to type of book, but... We'll see. Then I picked up... Actually, I got sent this copy. I lied. But it is out now. The Bone Shard Daughter by Amanda, uh, Andrea Stewart. Excuse me. Um, I read this already. This is actually our September book club pick. By the time this comes out, we probably already did the video or or the live stream, I mean. But even if we didn't, you probably don't have time to read this if you haven't. Um, but we are doing a live stream about this, which if it's after the fact, you can go back and watch it if you want spoilers. But I enjoyed it. It was pretty unique. Um, You're reading it right now and you're kind of struggling through it. Essentially, it's through the eyes of four to five different people. And I say four to five. Because you don't know. Because. You don't remember. That's not true. That's how. I, I don't know if it's four to five. I don't know if it's four or five. Anyway, it's because one of the people, like their perspective, it's like her lover that you read through uh-huh. also. So it's like they're kind of together. And then there's three other people that you read through. Um, And it's basically, what is the story about? Like, I cannot give the synopsis. The magic system is not good. I don't like it so far. I don't know if it gets better, but it's it's very low magic almost. Um, It's like... People don't really seem like they have magic. They, They pull up magic from bone shards from people. Like, and then they can, yeah. they can manipulate so, those like, things. At a certain age, when you're younger, you have to give up a bone shard, which is, like, a piece of bone somewhere, like, near your ear. And you're cut open, and that bone shard is taken. And then if your shard is used for, like, magic, you feel physical effects of it later on. Um, so the, the bone shards are used to create, like, creatures, essentially. And that's how they animate the creatures. Um, and make them follow commands is like through your bone shards, which is unique and cool. I didn't mind it. I, I don't mind not having a ton of magic and just a little magic, but well, it's not that. It's like I just don't like the way the magic system works. Like I, I just they don't explain it enough. At least halfway through the book, they don't explain it enough. Um, there doesn't seem to be like a science behind it so far. Well, um, that is the science. She's gonna keep crying, my dude. You're helpless, cat. But you're still crying. I know, you have a doggy there. You wanted to come up here. Yeah, this is your fault. We were peaceful. Everybody was happy up here. And you have to ruin it. So this says, The Sukai Dynasty has ruled the Phoenix Empire, and she left. She's, she's gone now. She's going to cry to come back up pretty soon. For over a century, their mastery of bone shard magic powering the monstrous constructs that maintain law and order. But now the Emperor's rule is faltering and the revolution is sweeping across the Empire's many islands. Trapped in a palace of locked doors and secrets, Lin is the Emperor's daughter but not his heir. Her childhood memories have been erased by a mysterious illness. The only way to reclaim her birthright and overthrow her, her father is to master the art of the very bone shard magic that his subjects fear. So yeah, the whole thing. Lynn, no, but I don't want to read more. No, read more. 
I want to see if it makes sense. But the secrets behind her father's power are dark and deep, and the magic he wields does not come without a cost. When the revolution reaches the gates of the palace itself, Lynn must decide how far she's willing to go to claim her throne and save her people. That, that made it sound better. Sometimes you got to finish the whole, uh, the whole synapse. So... Lynn is just one of the perspectives we read through. Yeah, that's through. so weird. Like, um, then there's an older dude, and he's the my best. favorite. Yeah, he's I great. I forget his name. I forget everybody's name. His name is Jarvis or something. Oh, yeah, Jovis. Jovis. I think. Yeah, Jovis. Um, he has a little creature, and the creature is really cool. Um, like a cat deer. Yeah, it's like a... Cat deer. Like a ferret. Ferret. Like, creature. Uh, otter. And they call it, like, possibly some sort of sea dragon from, like, the past that cool. hasn't been seen in a long He's time. He's little. He could fit in your hand. Yeah. I would definitely continue with the series. And I can't really talk about it more now, but... It... If it doesn't get any better, I will not continue with the series. <laughs> so. The end. Ooh. Then we got sent hard copies, physical copies of this series, oh, which dope. I'm really excited about. Yeah. Shades First Rule by AFK. We did a, a book book club for that a couple yes. months ago. Um, I really liked it. And I read the second one. The Second Betrayal mm -hmm. by AFK. Mm -hmm. I still got the third one to go. I'm waiting for the audiobook to come out. It should be coming out later next month or something like that. In the next couple months, the audiobook should be out. That's when I'll, I'll, I'll pick that one up. I think he said October. Yeah. So the, in the next... Third Temple. Dude, these covers are so cool. I just love them. I like the I like that they're all cohesive. Yeah. You know, they all fit together. They all have like how's the sides look? a dude. How's the sides look? Yeah, I like when things look good together. You know, that's the most important thing. Now, do we know if this is a three-part series? I don't know. Or if there's going to be more? It seems like there's not enough. Like the last book cannot tell the the whole rest of the story because too little time goes between really? book one and two. Yeah, it's very... I haven't read book two yet, but he did. It's very a small amount of time. Um, But essentially, this is book one, and we read it. We really liked it. I think I gave it a four to a 4.5. It's a lit RPG. It. Um, It's very litty. Um, I want to see what the stats look like. The, yeah, the only downside to the, um, to the audio book is that... There are a um, lot of stats. The stats, like, they basically will read through the, all of the stats. You know, like, strength increased by 0.2%. Uh, dexterity increased by 0.2%. And it's just like, it's like, it's basically that. Yeah, yeah, this is like just two pages of stats. I feel like if you were physically reading it, you could get yeah, through just, that much quicker. You, uh, you wouldn't read it. You would just kind of yeah. glance through really quick. And so Let's see. He signed all these for us, which is cool. He, like, crossed out his name. Nice. Say, shades first rule, travel fast alone, move far together. Let's go far. That's cool. And he dated them. So it's really nice. Uh, the author actually sent these to us. Um, he was really awesome and really cool. And he basically reached out to us after he watched our live stream, which was scary. <laughs> like, it's always scary when, like, authors watch you critiquing their stuff and then they... Well, I'm not scared. ...message you after. I'm not scared. But we liked it a lot, thank goodness, so... Um, I'm excited to read book two. Book two is like I liked, significantly I liked bigger. Book, uh, I liked book two more because it was like, book one was like an intro and book two, it was like more building on the world. I feel like this book is my favorite cover. If you guys, like, I love the storage system, right? Like storage is, is so important in this. It's really good. Oh, he said, I love your channel. He's so nice. Next up. Oh, you read this one. I did. It's huge. It's huge. Huge. So it was in my latest wrap up for July and August. Um, if you want to watch my full review on this book, but I don't care who hates me. I love Twilight. Me too. I like it too. So I didn't read this one though. Whatever. The books um, are good. The movies are not great. I think you would enjoy this more than I did because you read the first book fewer times. Yes. It was a little redundant once. for me. I read it once. I read it like five. <laughs> so it was a little redundant for me. Edward is very broody and very emo. Uh, just giving you that. I right am there. not a fan. So you might not like this then. But uh, yeah, okay. Um, can I see the naked? Yeah. So it's got really pretty. And blood ears. red. See, see what they did there. Also, uh, pomegranate is kind of bloody. Yeah, it's a pomegranate. They mentioned pomegranates a bunch of times in the books. Why? I forget. I don't get, like, I've never heard of... It's like some old 
like term or Did whatever they do that it? he's using. They're not in the old book. Not no, in the no. old book. It's only in, in his, his mind. Book. Oh, he's a pomegranate guy. So, no, it has something to do with like him quoting something old or something like that. And it has the pomegranate in it. I can't remember now. <sighs> but anyway, I enjoyed it. I forget. I think I gave it like a 3.5. It was a little too much on the broody side for me and a little too repetitive because... I mean, obviously, it's a mirror of the first Twilight book, except through his eyes. So every conversation and interaction that he has in book one is in here. Mm. So if you haven't read that one recently, then it shouldn't be too much for you. Also, I just realized this is like a shiny cover. Yeah, like it's a really shiny. Glossy cover. I think the original Twilight... So my Twilight books are all downstairs somewhere. In the basement. Yeah. Not, not, down, not just downstairs. I have a lot of basement books that I have to bring up. Yeah, eventually. basement books. And then maybe we could do a haul on all my old books. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like a lot. The shadows. Fingers. This, this copy is completely damaged. They did send me a new one, but I haven't cleaned it yet. So um, that's that. Shadows, my July book of the month pick. You knew a teenager like Charlie Crabtree. A dark imagination, a sinister smile, always on the outside of the group. Some part of you suspected he might be capable of doing something awful. 25 years ago, Crabtree did just that, committing a murder so shocking that's attracted the kind of infamy that only exists on the darkest corners of the internet and has inspired more than one copycat. Jeez. Paul Adams remembers the case all too well. Crabtree and his victim were Paul's friends. Paul has slowly put his life back together, but now his mother, old and suffering from dementia, has taken a turn for the worse. Though every inch of him resists, it's time to come home. It's not long before things start to go wrong, and Paul learns that Detective Amanda Beck is investigating another copycat that has struck in his nearby town, the nearby town of Featherbank. So, I hear this book is really, really good from the people that I know that have read it. Um, so, I'm excited to read it and see what I think. I think this cover is awesome. It's cool. It's pretty cool. We didn't show the naked, but it's a book of the month. It's a book of the month. They all look the same except colors. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's really like, you got a big old cut right there. You probably can't see I it. I know. The thing was cut. They sent me another copy. That's good. So, I mean. You kind of see it. It's pretty nice of them. Like, literally no questions asked. I just told them my book came broken and I figured they would ask me for a picture, but they didn't. And they were just like, here's a new one. So... Then I picked up um, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This was an add-on, you know, because this is... Why does that cover look so familiar? I don't know. I've never had it before. That snake. There, there's snakes on, like, so many covers yeah. right now. I don't know why. This... So this is the same author everyone knows that does the um, Six of Crows in the... What do you call it series? Grisha trilogy? Yeah, that one. Um... It says, Galaxy Alex Stern is the most unlikely member of Yale's freshman class. Raised in the Los Angeles hinterlands by a hippie mom, Alex dropped out of school early and into a world of sh shady drug dealer boyfriends, dead-end jobs, and much, much worse. In fact, by age 20, she's the sole survivor of a horrific, unsolved multiple homicide. Some might say she's thrown her life away, but at her hospital bed, Alex has offered a second chance to attend one of the world's most prestigious prestigious universities on a full ride what's the catch and why her blah 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 i don't know so lee bardugo how do you spell lee l-e-i-g-h why i don't know it's a way to spell it up until this point has written fantasy stories which there's fantasy in this there's, there's a snake on the cover probably some sort of fantastical element but I don't know. It's very, I hear it's contemporary. So I'm not yeah. sure if I'm going to love it. I'm hoping that there is a fantasy aspect to it. Let me know. I like I that cover. This cover is really cool. It's, it's pretty. The leg, the library of legends. Oh, going back a little bit. I oh. keep meaning to ask you this. Okay. Do you notice in the Bone Shard Daughter how the narrator says the word library? No. It drives me crazy. How do they say it? She keeps calling it like library. Oh no. Almost. Like Library. It's like it's very close to very, being correct. Very slight. But yeah. Slightly off. I'm like slightly off. Ah every time she said it I was like, no. Library. Anyway. Library. 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 Uh by Jane Janie Chang. 
I love a good historical fiction sometimes. Ooh, I like this. And uh, so that's why I chose this book. This was a at like one of the five picks that you could choose from in April. <laughs> China, 1937. I didn't even know you got that. I never even seen that cover until today. Yeah. Well, this is my book of the month pick that month. I know, but I haven't seen that cover until today. And you've had it since July. April. April. When Japanese bombs begin falling on the city of Nanking, 19-year-old Hu Lian and her classmates at some sort of university are ordered to flee. Leon and a convoy of students, faculty, and staff must walk a thousand miles to safety, a journey marred by the constant threat of aerial attack. And it's not just the refugees who are at risk. The group has been entrusted with a priceless treasure, a 500-year-old collection of myths and folklore known as the Library of Legends. Hmm. She finds friendship and a cautious romance with the handsome, boy, or handsome and wealthy Liu Xiaoming, but after one classmate is murdered and another arrested she finds she must escape before a family secret puts her in danger accompanied by Xiao and the enigmatic maidservant Sparrow she makes her way to Shanghai hoping to reunite with her mother hopefully that all happens in like the first chapter <laughs> I know right because that's, like, that's like, a lot to give you away you know some of her classmates die oh okay I guess when that happens I won't be surprised did Sounds you notice cool. that the uh, image kind of looks like a a canvas. canvas. I did not at first. I don't even know if you guys would be able to see that. First thing I noticed. They can see it. I believe in y'all. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Oh, that is green, huh? I love this cover. Like extra lime. So this book came out in June, and I want to read it this October if I can, because it's very like Halloween-esque feeling from what I understand. It's got a ghost story, essentially. So It's got a ghost story? It, it is? is a ghost story. Okay. Um... Oh, why couldn't that be lime green? Yeah, I don't know. It says, Maggie Holt doesn't believe in these things, even though they're, they are details of the story that made her family, family famous. 25 years ago, she and her parents uh, moved to Bainberry Hall, a rambling Victorian estate in the Vermont woods. They spent 20 days there before fleeing in the dead of night in order, an ordeal um, her father later recounted in a horror memoir, House of Horrors. His tale of ghostly happenings and encounters with malevolent spirits became a worldwide phenomenon, rivaling the Amityville horror in popularity and skepticism. Maggie has lived her life in the shadow of her father's book, so when she inherits Bainberry Hall after his death, she returns to renovate the house to prepare it for sale. However, her homecoming is anything but warm. People from the past, chronicled in the House of Horrors, lurk in the shadows, and locals aren't thrilled that their small town has been infamous thanks to Maggie's father. So, I don't want to read more. Um, I think I, it sounds cool. Nine just yawned. Legit made me, yawn, made me yawn. You think it's boring sounding? No, nine yawned. I'm telling oh. you, that's what happened. Nine yawned, so I yawned. I stopped listening, though. Ghost story. I'm excited. Basically, her father wrote... A ghost story about this house and then it became famous like super famous and then she had to she inherited the house and now she's going back there to renovate it and there's probably going to be ghost stuff happening in that house i love when ghost stories are ghost stories like okay, can you stop um i don't like when you think it's a ghost story and then it turns oh, out to be something I else i hate that i like, ghosts Need to be in ghost stories. Yes. You can't have non-ghosts in a ghost story. So I'm hoping it makes no sense. that this is a legit ghost Guess story. Guess what? It also has that ectoplasm, plasm, like, color. Yeah. Like Slimer. Ah. Then I got, um, this is an arc, but it came out a while ago now. I, so, yeah. But it's The Life in Medieval Times of Kit Sweetly. It's a cute romance book. So it says, Working as a wench, i.e. waitress, at a cheesy medieval-themed restaurant in the sh Chicago suburbs, Kit Sweetly dreams of being a knight like her brother. She has the moves, is, cas is capable on a horse, and desperately needs that raise that comes with knighthood so she can help her mom pay the mortgage and hold a spot at her dream college. Company policy allows only guys to be knights. So when Kit takes her brother's place and reveals her identity at the end of the show, she rockets into internet fame and a whole lot of trouble. Blah, blah, blah. That sounds terrible. Sounds cute. I'm sorry. If you like cute stories like that, 
You'll probably like it. Sounds so corny. I would never watch that, read that, listen to that. None of those things. I would. It just, it's like one of those like cheesy, like feel good, like. There's eh. nothing wrong with feel good mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they're cheesy, there is. I don't think so. So I got sent a copy of Greythorn. I like that artwork. It is it's very nice artwork. Sequel to Bloodleaf, which I haven't read. Cool, I need to read. Cool name. Cool two words combined into one. Greythorn. No, I, oh, Bloodleaf. Bloodleaf. I hear. Super dope. So this came out in June. I hear that the first one's really good, and I keep meaning to pick it up and just you know, time and life. But I I don't really want to read you guys the synopsis for this because I haven't read the first one. I can't tell you that synopsis, and this is book two, so. There's that. I think it's a companion story, if I remember straight. You can correct me down below if I'm wrong. But I think, like, it's technically, like, you go through someone's eyes from the first book. Someone else's eyes, I mean, from the first book. Like the thing? Like what? Midnight Sun or whatever? No. Isn't that a companion book? No, 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 no. Book? Like, you're, like you're, it's a different story, but through its side character's eyes instead of the main person that you read in book one. But... Isn't that literally what that is? No, because is. that is a retelling of the same story. It's not a retelling. It's a point of view. It's a it's different not point that. of view. No, it's like... It's not a different point of view? This? This. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, Midnight Sun. But that's what Sun. you just said. That that's a companion novel that is the same... It's the it's the same timeline, but just a different person, right? It's a, no. It's so, a sequel, but through someone else's eyes, from what I, so I well, remember. That's considered a companion? Yeah, they're companion novels. Like, they belong together, but I think you can read them independently. I could be wrong. So, isn't that not a companion? So, I don't want to tell you. It's just another you. story. Oh, my God. I'm just trying to understand what these terms mean. Uh, I'm sorry if I don't know what they mean. I thought it companion. It says sequel, though, so I'm guessing you probably should read the first one. Well, you shouldn't have to guess. It says sequel. <laughs> it's 100% a sequel, then. Mexican Gothic. My July book of the month pick, uh, we did a read-along on my discord patreon members together i think like four or five of us read this um you didn't like it i liked it i didn't love it i know this book has like crazy didn't you give height. it a two no i think i gave it like a 3.5 i did not give it a two um what was good about it the atmosphere the kind of like fantastical element to but the it. main character was a drag i didn't like the main character the other characters were okay the overall story was pretty good. Um, the fantasy element I liked, but it was a little too far-fetched because it they tried to make it seem like it could happen in the real world um, to, like, almost anywhere, which didn't make sense to me. But I enjoyed it. I, I didn't find myself, like, bored at all, but I don't know if I would give it the hype that it has, to be honest. Um... I don't know. I don't really want to read the synopsis. It's basically a girl finds out that her cousin got married to this dude and that ever since her cousin's been in this mansion, this like creepy mansion, and she gets a letter that's concerning because it seems like her cousin's basically losing her mind. So she goes to like see how her, her cousin's doing and this creepy house and stuff happens and I thought it was a ghost story and it's not a ghost story. Mm. We just talked about that. <laughs> I got sent this randomly. Is that um, called Hawk? Yeah. So this came out in July. It's P I never read his series. What's it called? It's on the inside, probably. Maximum Ride. I never read that series. So I, I know that this is independent of the Maximum Ride series. Like, um, Ride, not Rise. So you can go into it without reading the first however many books. Is that a, a, a guy or a girl on the cover? The girl, I Why think. does she have a beard? She doesn't. That's her hair under the hoodie. It looks like she has a beard. <laughs> it <laughs> <Shut does. up. laughs> She legit has a beard, like a big old beard that comes all the way down to here. It says, when she was five, the girl known as Hawk was left on a desolate city street by her parents. They said they would come back for her. So every night for the next 10 years, Hawk returned to the city street. Her parents have never come back, but Hawk awaits there for them for her fa with her faith faithful Hawk with her faithful pet Hawk. Ridley perched on her shoulder. Huh. 
So uh, the girl's name is Hawk, and she has a hawk. I guess so. <sighs> I don't know. I've Could heard have anything else. I've heard mixed things about this book. Um, I think most of the mixed things are from people that loved the original Maximum Ride series and like couldn't get into this. I know it's YA, so I don't know how I'm gonna like it. To be perfectly honest, I I'll give it a shot, but she's basically Ray from Star Wars, right? Yeah, true. This book, however, I like I mentioned before, I think I'm not usually into witchy type stories, but this book looked and sounded really cool to me, and that is Year of the Witchling. Um, I think witchling. this cover is so awesome. Like, I love this cover. Are you sure it's not witching? It's witching. Year of the Witching. I can't English today. It's like, okay. This happens every it's time okay. I do you a haul. You didn't home. read it. You just, you just uh, assumed. Blah, blah, blah. But, um... It says, it, by the way, it's already out. It says, in the lands of Bethel, where the prophet's word is law, Emmanuel Moore's very existence is blasphemy. Her mother's union with an outsider of a different race cast. Is she licking you? Yeah, I can't with this. <laughs> Nine, come on, Nay. She's licking her paw on me. Oh, okay. Um, Stop. Stop. Her mother's union with an outsider of a different race cast her once proud family into disgrace. So Emmanuel does her best to worship the father, follow holy protocol, and lead a life of submission, devotion, and absolute conformity, like all the other women in the settlement. But a mishap lures her into the forbidden dark woods surrounding Bethel, where the first prophet once chased and killed four powerful witches. Their spirits are still lurking there, and they bestow a gift on Emmanuel. Um, the, the journal of her dead mother, who... Emmanuel is shocked to learn once sought sanctuary in the wood. Fascinated by the secrets in the diary, she finds herself struggling to understand how her mother could have consorted with the witches. But when she begins to learn grim truths about the church and its history, she realizes the true threat to Bethel is in its own darkness. Did you just read the whole book? I feel like that was a very long synopsis. Oh, I just read this little that was, thing. That was long. Yeah, but it's very small and big and wide. I don't know. It just sounds small, super atmospheric to me and very like creepy and i want to read it i'm hoping i never seasonal read stuff if that makes sense like i never halloween's yeah, coming like i never think like oh this is fall so i'm gonna read a ton of like creepy books but i'm like feeling it this year and i kind of want to so like i wanted to maybe read this and um that other book i said before home before dark creepy creepy books for halloween is that is that all of it? Oh, I thought that was all of it. I got this book so long ago in an Illumicrate box. Remember? Blood. Um, no. And I didn't get around to unboxing it again until pretty recently. It's actually the inside is signed by the author, and it has cool end pages. No, don't. Oh, it's her. damaged a little bit. It's okay. I've heard mixed stuff about this book since. Their varied gifts to control the world around them are unnatural and dangerous. Anastasia Mikolov, the crown princess, has a terrifying secret. Her deadly affinity to blood is her curse and the reason she has lived her life hidden behind palace walls. When Anna's father, the emperor, is murdered, her world is shattered, framed as his killer. Um, Anna must flee the palace to save her life, and to clear her name, she must find her father's murderer on her own. Blah, blah, blah. I heard... Is this like an Anastasia retelling? It seems like Why? It. Does Anastasia kill her father by no. accident or something? No. But I heard it Just because of her name? Described as that. It could be completely Is Anastasia wrong. a princess? She was. Oh. I think. I don't remember. But I don't know. I've heard mixed things. Let me know if you've read that and if you like it. I had that. I got that book a long time ago. If I Never Met You. I've actually heard really good things about this romance. Um, they recently sent it to me, I believe. When her partner of over a decade suddenly ends things, Lori is left reeling. And not only because they work at the same law firm and she has to see him every day. Her once perfect life is in shambles and the thought of dating again in the age of Tinder is nothing short of horrifying. I agree. Can you imagine trying to date nowadays? Yeah. Um, are you sure you haven't read this one or you haven't I, hauled this one? Maybe. 
I feel like you probably feel like a lot of romances sound the same. Sounds the same. Um, it, the, she, she gets a new job. Wait. The, when news of her ex's pregnant girlfriend hits the oh, office grapevine, Lori decides taking the humiliation lying down is not an option. Then a chance encounter in a broken down elevator with yeah. the office playboy opens up oh, a new no. possibility. Oh, God. This sounds terrible. No, no, no. Stop reading it. I don't want to know anymore. Dude, this sounds actually really good. No, it doesn't. I like it romance. It sounds like smut. I'm in like a romance mood, okay? It sounds smutty. It is I not. hate it. Uh, yeah, he's, the, he's the, the, the office playboy. That doesn't mean anything. He's like Dwight from The Office. Okay. Um, I kind of want to read this. Not going to lie. Great. I might read it I'm soon. I'm so happy for you. You should be. I'm not. That was sarcasm. Naruto! should read that. Look, it's... Don't, t don't say who that is in the back. Don't say who that is in the back. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. It's oh, a, shoot. It's a spoiler. Shoot. You I just tried to cover the wrong side. I know. I collect these Naruto books, and I think this is the last one. No way. Yeah, they're all out now. What? So, I've been collecting these three... Bind-ups? Yeah, three uh, volume bind-ups in one. And now that I have them all, I can hopefully read them someday. Maybe never, because I never read manga. Most likely never. But it's nice to have all of them. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I should, like, display them all. Yeah, that'd be kind of you know. nice. You know, like a little, like a little display. This is another one that I can't believe I haven't read yet. Empire of Gold. Oh, my. You haven't read that yet. I know. How is that even possible? Also, another one that you haven't read yet. The the Strange Dreamer sequel. I know. But why a, haven't you read that yet? Because that's in that. Yeah. Why isn't that in that? Because it wasn't out yet. Well, that will be next year. So, as you all know, I love Kingdom of Copper and City of Brass, books one and two in this series. And I don't know why I haven't read this yet. Probably because it's enormous and it scares me. It's almost 800 pages. It's a nice cover. I like it. But I just love this series and I can't wait to continue. So this is the Empire of Gold? Yeah. What happened to the City of Brass? Oh, that's dope. Oh, it has like a texture to it. Oh, look. R.A. Salvatore. S.A.C. That's probably just the author, right? Yes. So I can't believe I haven't read this yet. Because I really loved books one and two. They are very dense, though. Like, they're dense fantasy. Like, it's not, like, a super chill, like, easy read. Like, there's a lot of information to take in. And I kind of wish I had time to read books one and two again. However, the author did do, like, an, a video um, recapping books one and two. So I'll probably just watch that. There was two books before this? Yeah. Oh, geez. I thought this was the second one. No, City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper, remember? Oh. And, and the Empire of Gold. Empire of Gold is obviously better because it's gold. Is there a platinum? Is there like a... This is the last book. Is there like a like a planet of platinum? That rhymes. Planet. planet of platinum. I think it's a good idea. Write it. I've, got, never, I've never seen that one. Yeah, I've got this randomly sent to me. Uh, this book came out in June. The Mirror Man. I don't know anything about it. Let's see. The offer is too tempting. Be part of a scientific breakthrough, step out of his life for a year, and be paid hugely for it. Okay. When Vigen Pharmaceuticals asks Jeremiah to be part of an illegal cloning experiment, he sees it as a break from, his, from an existence he feels disconnected from. No one will know he's been replaced. Not the son who ignores him, not his increasingly distant wife, and since a revolutionary drug called MELD can transfer consciousness and memories to his copy. From a luxurious apartment, he watches the clone navigate his day-to-day -day life, but soon Jeremiah discovers that examining himself from an outsider's perspective isn't what he thought it would be, and he watches in horror as his life spirals out of control. Hmm. All right. Next one I got randomly sent to me as well. This is Girl Gone Viral. One minute, Katrina King is enjoying an innocent conversation with a random guy at a coffee shop, and the next, a stranger has live-tweeted the entire encounter with a romantic, meet-cute spin, and hashtag Cafe Bay has the world swooning. Going viral isn't easy for anyone, but Katharina, or Katrina has painstakingly built a private life for herself far beyond her traumatic p past. I have no idea. This sounds more just like... Dumb? A romance. With the internet on the hunt for the identi 
identity of cute cafe girl. Jass, bodyguard and possessor of the most beautiful eyebrows Katrina's ever seen, offers his family farm as a refuge. This sounds nothing like that synopsis that I read in that thingy. It sounds terrible. I'm not going to lie. This doesn't sound that great to me, but... It sounds gross. It sounds like a romance. That's what I said. Gross. <laughs> you read this book. Um, Diamantine by Andrew Rowe. Second book in Weapons and Wielders. Yep. Um, it is great. We can't really talk about it. It's essentially like a side story to Sufficiently Advanced Magic sort of prequel to that. And um, it's told essentially like in Sufficiently Advanced Magic, they're having a conversation and it's someone retelling the past and that's what this is, right? So I really loved book one. I just haven't read book two yet. This book I did read. It was another book buddy read on discord for patrons fireborn this book is getting a lot of hype lately and i don't know why <laughs> like i was legit really bored through like the first three quarters of the book i really didn't think it was that great um and then the ending was pretty good so like i really like the way it ended and it makes me want to know what's going to happen next but i just haven't decided yet if but I not to that continue. much yeah yeah I haven't decided yet if I'm going to continue or not. Um, but let me know if you've read it and if you really liked it. I'm interested to see other people's opinions. I've pretty much heard a couple opinions on it and I don't I don't know. Like I just don't feel like it's that hype worthy. Do why don't you You shouldn't do that, Mick. You're going to like rip the page. Uh, another goldy one. Like why do I pick all like mustard yellow? They call me mustard yellow. This was a book of the month pick for August, The Space Whoa. Between Worlds. That is a cool cover. I like it. Can I see it up closer more? Flipping. Dope, dude. Dope, dude. My mother used to say I was born reaching, which is true. She also used to say I would get me killed. It would get me killed, which it hasn't. Not yet, anyway. An outsider who can travel between worlds discovers a secret that threatens her new home and her fragile place in it. In a stunning sci-fi debut that's both a cross-dimensional adventure and a powerful examination of identity, privilege, and belonging. I like that white. This was one of the main picks on Book of the Month, and it's sci-fi, and I like sci-fi, so I decided to get this one. This is an add-on I chose, I think, the same month, Heavenfall. It's a head. Ha Havenfall, my bad. There's a head there. Yeah. It took me, like, forever to see that when I first, like... Really? Like, the first, like, ten times I saw this cover, I thought it was just a mountain. You or, do that a lot. Yeah. You don't... You miss things. Let me know if you missed this or if, if you've seen this Not cover. Not on that. Look how much... Yeah, look I know. How, look how visible it is it's there. Like, if you've seen this cover and you never saw that head, let me know. I'm interested because I never saw it. So another... Ooh, the white looks so nice. It's really cool. It has like little bits of bobs in yeah, it. Yeah, like dust. Paper dust. This one came out in March 2020, but I... What is it about, dude? Did it an add-on later. Hidden deep in the mountains of Colorado lies the Inn of Havenfall, a sanctuary that connects ancient worlds, each with its own magic. For generations, the Inn has protected all who seek refuge within its walls, and any who disrupt the peace can never return. For Maddie Morrow, Morrow, summers at the inn are more than a chance to experience this magic firsthand. Havenfall is an escape from reality where her mother sits on death row accused of murdering Maddie's brother. It's where Maddie fell in love with handsome Fjordan soldier Brecken, and it's where one day she hopes to inherit the role of innkeeper from her beloved uncle. But this summer, the impossible happens. A dead body is found, shattering everything the inn stands for. With Brecken missing, her uncle gravely injured, and a dangerous creature on the loose, Maddie suddenly finds herself responsible for the safety of everyone in Havenfall. I've heard some pretty good stuff. Not a lot of stuff, though. So let me know if you've read this. I'm interested to see if you liked it. This was randomly sent to me. It came out in July. Scarlet Odyssey, but it seemed pretty cool uh, based on the synopsis when I first read it like a million years ago. It's big. It's like 600 pages. I see what you mean. It's what? 600 pages. 
but that other one was thinner. It was like and it the was same. Like 800 yeah. pages. Yeah. Um, men do not become mystics, they become warriors. But 18 year old Sa- Salo, Salo has never been good at conforming to his tribe's expectations. For as long as he can remember, he's loved books and magic in a culture where such things are considered unmanly. Despite it being sacrilege, Salo has worked on a mythical device in secret that will awaken his latent magical powers. And when his village is attacked by a cruel enchantress, she, uh, he knows that it's time to take action. Salo's queen is surprisingly accepting of his desire to be a mystic, but she will not allow him to stay in the tribe. Instead, she sends him on a quest. The quest will take him thousands of miles north to the jungle city, the political heart of the continent, where he must gather information on a growing threat to his tribe. So, I guess it's not sci-fi? It sounds fantasy. Not sci-fi. I was wrong. But it seems pretty neat. It looks like it should be a sci-fi book, right? Yeah, but remember, technology is undistinguishable from magic when it advanced enough i don't know what the saying is what yeah it's like if you have really advanced technology it's indistinguishable from magic oh i see take I see. a cell phone yeah, yeah, yeah. back a hundred years and show them you'd be burned at the stake true all right oh i hauled this book once but i figured i would show it to you guys this is the final copy of the last odyssey um, or finished copy rather they sent me an arc a while back uh so i've had it for a while Nice. The Last Odyssey, huh? Yeah, it says it's... I'll just read you the very top. It's like a Troy story. To save the world and our future, Sigma Force must embark on a dangerous odyssey to an ancient past whose horrors are too present... are all too present in this page-turning thriller. The Lost Odyssey? Is that what the uh, the original is? Or not the original, but like... That's what no, I'm the thinking. The Iliad and the Odyssey. The Iliad and the Odyssey. Oh, my God. For eons, the city of Troy, whose legendary fall was detailed in Homer's Iliad... Uh, was believed to be myth until archaeologists in the 19th century uncover- undis- nope. discovered undiscovered undiscovered uncovered oh. <laughs> its ancient walls buried beneath the sands. If Troy was real, how much of Homer's twin tales of gods and monsters, curses and miracles, the Iliad and the Odyssey could also be true and awaiting discovery? I'm so confused about what that means. I did not. I, didn't I think understand. they're gonna like do some timey wimey travel and uh-huh. figure out what really happened. Okay. Because you know, everyone knows that the Iliad and the Odyssey wasn't real, so. What do you mean? It didn't happen. What do you mean? <laughs> a pale light in the black. A Neo G novel, so I'm guessing there's been other ones, and I hope you can read this one without reading those. For the past year, their cl- uh, their clo- close loss in the annual boarding games has haunted the Neo G and it what. It's okay. Oh. You'll make it. You'll make it through. Interceptor. I believe in you. Team Zuma's ghost. With this year's competition looming, they're looking forward to some payback until an unexpected personnel change leaves them reeling. Their best swordsman has been transferred, and a new lieutenant has been assigned his as his replacement. Maxine is trying to carve a place in the world on her own, away from the pressure and influence of her powerful family. The last thing she wants is to cause trouble at her command on Jupiter Station. With her new team in turmoil, Max must overcome her self-doubt and win their trust if she's going to succeed. I don't I don't get what this book is about. Do you? No. Routine mission to retrieve a missing ship has suddenly turned dangerous lives on the line. So, like, she gets appointed in this new position and has to, like, prove herself? I don't know. It's another book I can't believe I haven't read yet. Sarah J. Mass. Crescent City. It's her first adult novel. Um, and this is another one that's like a million pages long and doesn't look it. It's 800 pages. So basically just like her last book in the Throne of Glass series where it was like super thin, dense pages. Um, I don't want to know anything about this book. I know certain people that have read it that really love it. I feel like she gets a lot of people that love to hate on her and they're just like never going to admit that they like her stuff. Um, I don't like her stuff. You can hate me all you want, but I like her books. I never read any of them. And uh, you would not like them. I'm telling <laughs> you right now. But they're just like... Thanks, Meek. <laughs> they're just like eye candy kind of for me or like oh, book candy. Like Eye candy? That doesn't make yeah. any sense. I got something in my eye. Is it candy? No. <laughs> 
It's kind of like book candy, you know, like. No, I don't understand what that term just means. Just like guilty Sp pleasures. Fan service. I don't know. Like guilty pleasures. Like like what? They're not like the best written novels on the planet, but they're. they're Is there like, sex? I, in this, I don't know. Her other stuff, yes, eventually. But it's young adult. There's still sex in young adult. That doesn't make any sense. They're young adults, it's not a full thing. adults. But um, gross. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to know much about it. Wow, that is a, that is gorgeous. Can you show them? Put it up closer, dude. That is a. Nope, crooked. That is the. Uh, that really is a reason pretty. to read. Right. The book. Oh, Sailor Moon. Awesome. It's a C though. Is it a C or a moon? It's a moon. It's. It's the same picture in the back. Ah, oh, that's always disappointing. See, I've heard good stuff. Um. I want books to read should it. start having like little pull-out posters. Some you could, like, books do. You could like rip them out and like. Yeah, some books do. Very cool. I don't know what it's about. It's all right. It's all right. Don't want to know. I got this book in an Illumicrate box a million years ago, and it is that book, uh, the Starless Sea. Same person, I think, that wrote the Night Circus, which I didn't love. Um, is it a real signature? Um, yeah. is, it, is it shinier than others? So it's like special end papers. Is it shinier? I don't know. Nah. I don't think it's an actual signature, which kind of sucks. Why even bother? Yeah, why bother? Why bother, yo? I've heard mixed stuff about this book. I'm kind of bitter. I don't like the no dust jacket naked book. Like... This would be cool if it had a dust jacket on it. It has a, pa a, a page holder, though. I mean, they tried to go with, like, something cool and unique. But to me, it's just a way to get this book dirty all the time. Like, the dust cover, like, protects the book. The dust jacket, rather. When you're not reading it. Um, And I don't know. I feel like it's a little too simple for them to take away that dust jacket and just have like a unique book like if i'm gonna have no dust jacket make it like a shiny non-fabric cover in my opinion but i i don't like this format it just looks like i lost the dust jacket i didn't really love the night circus which is the other book that this author wrote read. wrote um and i've heard mixed things about this like let me know down below if you guys read this and if you liked it i heard it's a little like boring and long and confusing for no reason so i probably wouldn't have picked it up and it came in an illumicrate box then i got faithless hawk this book is now out i think it came out in july it did um it's the sequel to the merciful crow so i recently picked up the merciful crow and tried to read it and I didn't DNF it, technically. I did put it down and stopped reading it for now. I think it's something that I would enjoy more in a, an audiobook format than physical format. Because the overall magic system and the overall story was cool and it was unique. But I was just finding myself having a hard time, like, physically reading it. So I do want to know what happens in that story. Um, eventually, I'll pick it up, probably in an audio format, if it's, like on sale on audible or something um but this is book two can't really talk about it she is part of a group i think called the crows though and uh they dress in like crow outfits they're tasked with getting rid of illness so they're doctors kind of yeah with the masks then I picked up this. This was my book of the month pick for May. Um, it is kind of like I, like a reality show, reality TV, like housewives type book. I hear that it's just very like fun and easy to read and just kind of like, you know, reality TV. You know how like you get sucked into watching reality TV? I hear that that's what this is kind of like. Um, says it's a dark, witty page turner about a struggling young musician who takes a job singing for a playgroup of overprivileged babies and their efforts effortless <laughs> effortlessly cool moms only to find herself pulled into their glamorous lives and dangerous secrets. So there's that. I feel like I would want to pick this up if I just ever didn't know what I wanted to read and just wanted something easy and super simple to read and fun. Let me know if you read this. 
I'm intrigued. I don't know anyone who's read it. Then I got this book sent to me. I believe it's now out. It's called The Empress of Salt and Fortune. It says, A royal young... Nope. A young royal from the far north is sent south for a political marriage in an empire reminiscent of imperial China. Her brothers are dead, her armies and their war mammoths long defeated and caged behind their borders. Alone and sometimes re reviled? I guess that's a Revered? word. Revered? No, reviled. She must choose her allies carefully. Rabbit, a handmaiden sold by her parents to the palace for the lack of five baskets of dye, befriends the emperor's lonely new wife and gets more than she's bargained for. At, at once feminist high fantasy and an indictment of monarchy, this evocative debut follows the rise of the empress Inyo, who has few resources and fewer friends. I see a rabbit, but I don't know what those other creatures are. Well, there's are. also an elephant. Where? The tusks and the oh, holding oh, the elephant. Oh, holding the rabbit, you mean? Yeah, holding the rabbit. The elephant holding the elephant? That's <laughs> uh, weird. I don't know. I don't know much about that book. One of them is a bird. And the other one is a lion of some kind. Doug. This book, I'm super, super excited for. Tell them why you're excited. Seven Deadly Shadows. I'm excited because it just basically sounds like anime death note it sounds like death well, it does note. not that's the story doesn't but it has shinigami and it has kira in it kira why do you have to always kira. correct the way i say kira it's kira we'll say everything in japanese kira fuji fujikawa ah, got it his no. name was light fujikawa no isn't yagami light yam yamago Yama yagami light though yagami yagami K kakashi no yagami Sakura. Anyway, Kira has always been a girl on the fringe, bullied by her peers and ignored by her parents. Kira has only ever felt at home at her grandfather's Shinto shrine, where she trains to be a priestess. But Kira's life is shattered on the night her family's shrine is attacked by a vicious band of yokai demons. When the help, with the help of Shiro, the shrine's gorgeous half fox, half boy Kitsune. Does it say gorgeous? Yeah, it does. Kira discovers that her shrine harbors an ancient artifact of great power, one the yokai and their demon lord, Shuten Doji, will use to bring an everlasting darkness upon the world. Unable to face Shuten Doji and his minions on her own, Kira enlists the aid of seven ruthless Shinigami, death gods, to help stop the brutal destruction of humankind. But some of the death gods aren't everything they initially seemed, nor is loyal to Kira's cause as they first appeared. What if one of them is named Ryuk? Ryuk? I don't know. I just love or it. Or Rem. Them? Why do you always have to correct everything I say? You're saying it wrong. I'm saying it in English. I speak English. Ego? No, English. So... Did you just call me an a-hole? Ego is English. You're an a hole. Nihongo is Japanese. Yeah, I know. You do? Yeah. Oh. You yell at me all the time about saying Jap Japanese wrong. Um, so this sounds also like an October y book to me. I don't know why, just because it kind of sounds creepy and like it's got death gods in it. I mean, come on. It does. Um, so I, I want to try to read this in October. I've had it for a while now and I just forgot how awesome it sounds and I also hope it's that really one. good. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to read also Home Before Dark and Year of the Witching. I say that, but, you know, October is not so long. I mean, it's 31 days. It's as long as you can get out of a month. But uh, I have a lot of books to read, including Dune, which is our October book club pick, um, which is like 700 pages. So I say I'm going to read all these things, but I'm realistically probably not, even though I'm really excited. However, I think I'm going to make this one a priority and read it pretty soon I, I never really get into that like halloween like seasonal vibe but like i really kind of want to read like creepy books this month which probably is not going to be in like um, my wrapped book and my book jar book are probably not going to be creepy dune is more not it's probably not creepy it's sci-fi dude yeah so um yeah Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys stay tuned this long, leave a comment. And in that comment, 
uh, include, what was it again? Yokai. Ow. Uh, yokai. Or demon. You could say demon. Um, or yokai. Yeah, I guess. It's hard. It's a hard word to include in your thing. Y-O-K-A-I. In case you want to know how it's spelled. Thanks for watching. Say bye, Meek. Bye, Meek. Oh, wait, what are we going to do now? Food. Oh, yeah, you want pizza. I want a pizza. I don't know why I'm telling, pointing at you guys. <laughs> but I want a pizza. You can eat a pizza. I want a pizza. Anyway. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.